Hey guys, welcome back to the Kinwoven Home. I am Shara, and I'm so happy that you're here. We have officially started this new series, and it's called Creating a Beautiful Home with Kids. As you guys know, I have a little one, and I also have another I one. Get that. Could you try again? Excuse me, I'm in the middle of filming. Shh. Siri didn't catch the answer. Yeah, she didn't know I was pregnant. Surprise! You know, something that I've learned, we have a dog, we're gonna have two kids, and messes around your home are just inevitable. So today's video is all about defending your home against those messes and some tried and true tips that I have learned and cultivated about how to conquer the messes, have a good attitude of they're gonna happen, you know, it's just stuff, but when they do happen, what do you do to fix it and to kind of manage um, that situation? Because we all wanna have a beautiful home and I believe that that's possible. I believe you can have a beautiful home, have it reflect your style and I think it can also work for your family while still being something that you're proud of and it's not just like a chaotic kid zone, although that does happen sometimes. It's all possible, you just gotta do a little bit of, a little bit of elbow grease. Is that the... What does that mean? Who has grease on their elbows? That is such a weird phrase. Okay, so a lot's been happening over here in this world. We have our $25,000 giveaway. If you guys have not heard about this, Design Sessions members have the ability to enter to win $25,000 cash to make a dream room come to life. Basically, if you're a member on the Design Sessions, every month between now and the end of December, Every month that you're a part of the design sessions, you get an extra added entry into this amazing giveaway that we're doing. The winner is gonna win a consultation with myself and my mom, and then also $25,000 cash to make the, their dream space come to life. So if you want to learn more about that, make sure you click the link below. Sign up for the design sessions, or if you're already a member, you don't have to do anything. You just have to be a member. We already added you, and we're just super excited. Oh, and today's question of the video. You know, when you get pregnant, it's like you lose your your breath. Those of you that have been pregnant understand this. The question of the video is, oh, what are what surface or what area of your home do you find yourself cleaning over and over and over and over and over? Is it the kitchen, that dang sink? It's just never empty. Leave your comment below and make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and go follow on Instagram because we do all kinds of fun stuff over there. All right guys, let's get started on today's video. tip is to invest in washable fabrics. Fabrics that you can just throw in the wash, I feel like it just gives you a peace of mind knowing like, okay, if it gets messy, I can throw it in the wash and it'll be nice and clean. You guys I'm sure are familiar by now, they have lots of rugs that are washable. To be honest, I actually have not tried any of the big washable rugs. So I think you'd have to have a pretty big washer to like shove, right? Like a nine by 12 washable rug in your washer. That seems like wishful thinking to me. But when it comes to rugs, let's say you wanna put a rug under a dining table. My big tip with that is just don't pick a white rug that's like really simple, not a lot of pattern, easy to spot a stain. You wanna pick a rug that's really busy, that has a lot of pattern, or something that is maybe like a jute rug. I've had my dining rug for like four years now. Honestly, you can't tell that we've ever dropped a single piece of food on the floor, and we've dropped lots of food on the floor. So I just highly recommend, if you can't get a washable rug, get something that is kind of busy in pattern, kind of has a lot of texture to it, and none will be the wiser. I think this video is gonna be full of random sayings that I don't really know what they mean, but they sound right. The other thing, when it comes to your sofa, sometimes you can get a sofa with, with slip covers. Those are great. You can take the slip covers off, you can have them laundered, you can wash them yourself. If you don't have slip cover uh, sofa, I used to do this all the time when we had our white sofa in Hermosa Beach and I talk about it, used to talk about it all the time. We had a linen sofa, so I went to Target and I got a cream colored linen blanket that was the same texture, it looked like the same thing as our sofa. And I would throw that blanket over the sofa 90% of the time. I didn't worry if Scout came in from outside all muddy and jumped on the sofa because I could take that blanket and I could throw it in the wash, no big deal. And then when we had friends come over, I would take the blanket off and we'd have a perfectly white sofa. And none would be the wiser. Also, if you don't wanna mess with any fabrics, getting a leather sofa honestly is great for messes because you can wipe it down. 
Um, you just have to, if you have a dog, you have to be open to the fact that you might get some scratches and some distressed marks. So that's just like the one thing to consider. We had have had two leather sofas with Scout and I think they still look great, but they do have like some claw marks. Nothing is ripped, it's just kind of like, oh, she kind of jumped off the sofa and left a little bit of a, a little love bite. Tip number two, always have a great stain remover on hand. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know I love Folex. Folex, I feel like it's from the 90s. It was probably an infomercial. I grew up with it, and it, I think it's a carpet cleaner. I have used it on our sofa. I actually put them in cute little brown bottles that I bought on Amazon with a little label on it. It's great for light colored fabrics and carpet. They say on the bottle, and I would also agree, try it on an inconspicuous corner of your sofa or in a small patch of your carpet if you have carpet. That way, if it does change the color slightly, it's not bleach, but it could possibly change the color if you have like a peach colored you know, carpet or something. But if you have cream or white color fabrics you're working with, normally those are fine. I use it on our sofa all the time. You just spray a little bit on the area, you rub it in with your fingers, you kind of let it sit there, and then you use a cloth and you dab where the area is and it should lift that stain pretty well. People think I'm crazy for having white fabric all over the house, having a dog and a baby, and now two babies running around, but I will say you can bleach white. So if you have, you know, white bedding, I always love white bedding. I love white because no matter what happens, if someone spills wine on the bed, if someone, the dog jumps on the bed, if there's a cut and someone bleeds on the bed, you can throw it in the wash, you put some bleach on it or some OxyClean, I love OxyClean, and it takes the stain out so quickly. Whereas if you have like a purple flower printed whatever, that's harder to get a stain out of because you can't use bleach and you could like see the variation if it does lift too much of the color. Number three, use child safety locks. You guys know um, from my kitchen series, my organization series, I talk about those locks that I have with like a little magic wand. I will link that below. Those are really great to use. You just hover the little wand over where the mechanism is and then the cabinet will open. But if you lock up some of the things that are obviously chemicals or things that could possibly stain kids can get into that they could cause messes like your paint cabinet or your Sharpies or you know, plum juice, I don't know. Making sure those things are behind a wall of sorts or a cabinet where they can't get into them, I think obviously that's going to help. Obviously things happen, accidents happen, so what are you gonna do? But ultimately I think you know that's one step to defend yourself against them getting into stuff, bringing it into the living room and having a color party all over your sofa. Number four, have a designated eating area. Now we have learned the hard way on this. We eat all of our meals at the dining table and there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But when it comes to snacks, I have made the mistake of letting Sawyer hold a banana or a Nutrigain bar. Those are the worst because they crumble and they get everywhere and then the little jelly inside gets on his hands or his face and then he rubs his face into my sofa. <laughs> Like, what are you doing? So we have learned really the only snack that is able to be walkable is like a puff or a goldfish that's in a container that can't spill. You know, he walks around and has to like put his hand in to get it. Those are walkable, but like other messy things, we keep that in the kitchen or we keep it at the dining room and he has to sit in his chair. And I just think that's a good lesson to learn to teach your kids. But if you eliminate where they can eat and I'm, you know, I don't know. Some people are crazy about this. I'm not like super crazy about it. I feel like, you know, you gotta live and you gotta let your kids live a little bit. But there are certain items that I'm like, eh, let's not bring the blackberries into the living room. That's probably not a good idea. Number five, provide plenty of outdoor time. Okay, so this one's kind of obvious, but it's exciting for me because Sawyer's getting to that age where he just wants to be outside all the time, which I think is fabulous and so fun. But giving kids plenty of time to play outside where they can't make too many messes that aren't super easy to clean up is a great, great thing. Even like outdoor fabrics, like we have a little outdoor sofa. Sometimes he'll get messy or Scout will get all muddy and then jump up on there. But honestly, if you get a good, um, what's that thing called, the sprayer? power washer, a lot of the time those outdoor fabrics are already like stain resistant. So if you power wash the heck out of things, you'll be surprised what comes up out of that. I'll also link a really great kind of stain remover for outdoor fabrics below that I just got that I'll plan to use. Like, you know, sometimes your fabrics can get algae or mold on them from being outside and wet and whatever. So if you have a pool and you have like pool chairs, it's really great to use that on those items and I will be sure to link that below. But ultimately, yeah, I think giving kids plenty of outdoor time, a place where they can just be kids and they can make messes and they can, we have like this giant pot outside that is you're supposed to put planters in. It was uh, the old 
the previous homeowners left it behind. And we're just gonna leave it a giant mud pit because Sawyer loves to dig in there and I'm just praying there's no like scorpions or snakes or any other Oklahoma critters hiding in there. But he just like loves to play with dirt and I think that's great. Now, if your kids love to play with dirt and they love to get messes all over their clothes, this is the best stain remover for your kids' clothes ever in the world, amen, hard stop, it's perfect. I'm gonna link it below, it's from Amazon. Watch this clip of the Blackberry versus the t-shirt and see what happens. Okay, I'm in my basement right now. Sawyer got a bunch of Blackberry on his shirt. Honey, watch this. There was a giant spot up here. Look how fast this stuff just takes it away. I got this on Amazon. Wait for it. Hello. It's gone. This is a miracle. This has been on here for three days and I'm just now remembered. I should go down there and try to get those stains out before it ruins the shirt. I cannot believe that. I'm not even scrubbing. I'm just spraying and walking away. Wow. Okay. I'm going to link this for you guys. But ultimately, take them outside so they get all their energy out. That way inside can be a peaceful refuge, which probably won't happen. They're still probably gonna be crazy. But if they get enough time outside to run around and be nuts, then they'll be tired when they get inside and they'll just sleep on your sofa instead of rub jelly all over your sofa. Okay guys, I hope that was a helpful video. I hope you had fun watching. I hope it inspired you to get up and go tackle some of those areas and implement some of these tips into your home. And if you guys have not yet subscribed, be sure to hit the subscribe button. That way you get notified. You can also hit the bell for all the different videos that we have coming up on this great series on creating a beautiful home with kids. Make sure you check out the other videos in this series. We've already uploaded two different videos. And what else? Oh, if you haven't followed on Instagram, I will link our, my Instagram down below. Would love for you to come follow me there and join and see all the fun that we're having. It's definitely more personal on Instagram, so if you want like the day-to-day -day stuff, be sure to check it out. Oh, and if you want to enter to win the $25,000 giveaway, be sure to click the link below and go sign up for the design sessions. Love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next week and every day in between then if you join on Instagram. I love you. Goodbye. Should just do a video about like weird phrases our parents used to say. Like my mom used to say, grab, gird your loins or like pull yourself up by your bootstraps. How that actually like physiologically doesn't make sense. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Where are your boots? Aren't they down here? How are you pull? Anyway, physics.